Hey, I'm Jake, and today I've got Tate. Alright, so I brought Tate back. It's been about a year and a half since he's been in one of my videos. I got yep. tons of comments from people saying, bring back Tate, bring back Tate, and there's always just been a scheduling conflict in trying to have him here when I'm doing videos. For but one and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. It's summer vacation now, and we have a little bit more free time, mm -hmm. so I thought I would bring him on. Last time he coined a phrase, or I guess coined a term, he called uh, himself a sketchbookist. And that's a person who... That was me? Yeah, you came up with that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's an avid drawer. He's a sketchbook fanatic. Ist. Sketchbookist. A sketchbookist. <laughs> and that's a person who draws in a sketchbook or is all about drawing in a sketchbook. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, you think we'll have a new t term coined this time? Maybe. But Maybe. I sound nope. a lot smarter to myself now that I made that up. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> all right, so I thought bringing Tate on we do two things today. Answer a couple questions from the video that I posted a while back asking for questions. By the way, thank you so much. I love all the questions on there. It's just gonna take a while to get through all of them. So answer a couple questions, and then I wanna show you this game that we play in the Parker house. Uh, that we do for fun whenever we're bored, or we do it with you know friends or with each other in the family. Yes. Yeah. Who came up with that game? I don't think it, maybe, I don't think it was me, I think. I don't think we came up with it in the house. I think it's a, like an established game, but yeah. we definitely have fun doing it. Question number one, Kolvich asks, maybe methods for finding ideas. That's his suggestion. I'm totally depressed at the moment and I don't get any ideas. And I know how he feels. Being depressed, not being able to find ideas. I don't know if it's like true clinical depression, but just being like bummed. Like I don't have any ideas. I've been through that before. I, I get that from time to time. And my solution there, and if anybody has watched any of my videos before, you know what I'm going to say. You have to have a full creative bank account. How do you fill your creative bank account? There's two different kinds of avenues to fill it. There's indirect experiences and there's direct experiences. And an indirect experience is anything that you, any sort of uh, experience that you absorb through the filter or through the lens of somebody else. So when you read a novel or you read a comic book or you watch a movie or you play a video game or you go to a Broadway play or you watch a TV show, all those types of things are experiences that you're watching that someone else has created and you can learn from those, you can pull from those and they're ideas that you can then put together from other, you know, put different ideas together to make your own ideas. And then direct experiences are things that you go out and do yourself. So you go on a vacation or you go do an act of service for somebody uh, that, that you don't know. You end up talking to them and you learn something about their life and they become the basis for a character or some one of their stories becomes something that you mixed with something that you saw in a video game and now you're putting these things together. And uh, what was it? Um, Steve Jobs, the yeah. Apple guy? Apple guy. He, there's a quote, I don't know the exact quote, but he says, creativity is just connecting dots. And every experience that you have is a dot. And the more dots that you have collected, the more interesting ways you can connect these dots together and come up with something unique, unique to you. So if you're frustrated and you don't know what to draw and you're out of ideas, it's probably because you haven't been out having experiences to draw from and to pull from. And you're your uh, your creative bank account is empty. Yeah, Tate, did you want to add anything to that? And what's, uh, what's your perspective <clears throat> on how do you like come up with ideas yourself? Okay, so basically everything you said, filling your creative bank account, but also I do comics and I get all my, like almost every single idea for a comic, a comic strip comes from like real life. So like, I don't know, if someone does something stupid at school, I'm like, hey, that's funny, I'm gonna make that into a comic. And that's why I make more during the school year than outside of it, because there's not a lot of stupid people. In your family? In, uh, Aww, never mind. that was nice. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'm not having as many experiences with other people doing stupid things that I can make comics about, it's uh, just... 
Okay, so let's do the next question. This is posted by Everyday Things. He says, do you think you should strive to get a special style or just find it through drawing a lot? Find your style through drawing a lot. I think if you're an inexperienced artist, there's no way you're gonna find a style without drawing a ton. I've met and know of more experienced artists, artists who have been drawing for 10, 20 years, who can take six months and retrain themselves and come up with a new style uh, that's, that's you know, pulling from other different artists and other other different things and, and combining them together to make their own new style that isn't like another style they do. But I don't see that happening with uh, some more amateur or, uh, you know, people who kind of draw part-time uh, or are newer to it. And I think for me, my style did not come until I just drew a bunch. And, and I think all style is is finding your little shortcuts, your little quirks, the way that you draw things when you're trying not to draw like someone else, or when you've taken what someone else has drawn and it's become your own thing and you've done it so much that it, that it has your unique flair to it. So that that's where I think style comes from. It just comes from line mileage, just drawing a ton, a ton, a ton, until finally something comes out that is uniquely yours and someone says, oh, I can tell you drew that because it looks the way that it does. How did you develop your style? Drawing a lot, Drawing all the time. And, but I, would you say you were influenced by some other artists? Well. Yeah, but I think the biggest part is drawing every day, but also since I'm on social media a lot and I follow a ton of artists, I mm -hmm. think they have also helped me. Also, your art books over there, I mm -hmm. would, I remember I would just flip through them and like copy something mm -hmm. from there. And so basically, my art most of my art style right now is that bookshelf. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> that book shelf and other artists that you've seen online and mm -hmm. you've kind of put them together to make something that's that's yours. Yeah. Do you see your style evolving as you get older and as you continue to draw? Like, do you see yes. yourself drawing differently at the age of 26 than you are at 16? Yeah, because you can look at it, one of my sketchbooks, like, I looked at my sketchbook from two years ago, mm -hmm. like when we did the last sketchbook is today, you know, it's not good. I don't like anything in it. And uh, so, yeah, it's evolving That's funny. super quick right now. That's funny, because I think his last, the one that we showed in that video last time is still really awesome. He's gotten better, but it still has like unique stuff to it that only 14 year old Tate could draw. Yeah, you maybe. Know? I don't know. I have to look at it again. Okay. All right, so we did a couple questions. Now let's do the, the drawing game. Yeah. Okay? All right, let's do that. All you need for this game is a piece of paper and a pen. That's it. And hands. And hands. <laughs> and eyes. Okay, the first thing you do is you take a piece of paper and you fold it in half. Fold it right down the middle like that. And then you unfold it and you draw two lines just like that. So you got your two lines right there. And then you fold it back in half. So when it's in half, you see two lines on either side. All right, so now it's folded. One person takes it and they can either draw on the top half of the paper or the bottom half of the paper. If they're drawing on the top half of the paper, they draw the top half of a character. And then when they're done, they hand it over without showing what they've drawn to the other person and they draw the bottom half. And then you open it up and you see what kind of crazy character the person's drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, does this game have a name? We don't have a game for it. It's just er, a name for the game. It's just like- I'm sure there's a name for it somewhere out in the world. We just okay. call it the foldy piece of paper with a pencil game. Yeah, the folded paper game. Okay, I'm gonna go first and then he'll go second. All right. I'm gonna do the top okay. side first. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm gonna flip it over so Tate can't see it, and then it's his turn to draw the bottom part, and then I'm, I'm not gonna look. Okay. Right, okay, done. this is as good as it is gonna get, so let's unfold it. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. 
That is super weird. <laughs> He's gonna have to draw, like, drive with his like head scraping against. Hold on, let's zoom out here. <laughs> okay, well, but why would you do the? It doesn't line up. Oh there. shoot! Here, I can fix it. Okay, fix it. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. So here we have a weird car thing that's about to ram into a, ram into a boy. <laughs> that is bizarre. All right. That's the game. Can we please do another one? All right, let's do another one. This was terrible. All right, we're gonna do a second one. Tate's doing the head now, the top part, and I'm gonna do the, uh, the the leg part. I think part of the fun of this game too is like trying to outdo the the other person. Like, so then that's not fair. No, trying to outdo them in weirdness, not in not in artistic ability, but in silliness, I guess. So right? that's not fair for you now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, my turn? Yes. Okay, now I gotta do the legs. Here we go. Um. All right, what is this gonna be? And... <laughs> good day. <laughs> that's good. I yeah. think that's a fun one. So then what I like doing is taking the character that we designed and doing like a, another version of it. So are these feathers on them? Uh, sure. And you made them look better. <laughs> What's the brush pen? The brush pen makes everything look better. <laughs> Let's call him uh, Sherlock McClack McClack. Okay. Wait, why Sherlock? Um, because he's saying good day, like an Englishman. So, are you saying that all British people are Sherlock? No, I'm saying all British people say good day, right? <laughs> all right, I think we're good. Let's call this a done video, give me five. All right, everybody, in closing, I just wanna thank svslearn.com for making this video possible. If you haven't checked out svslearn.com, it's a, it's a website, I call it like the Netflix of art classes. So you can subscribe for $15 a month, get access to the, the entire library of content on there, of educational like art content on there. I've got a ton of classes that I've done on there as well. And it's, a, it's just a great way to learn your fundamentals, learn how to draw perspective, learn how to draw characters, learn how to, you know, there's a class that I did on how to pose a character in different poses. So yeah, you've designed your character, but now how do you do them in a running pose? How do you do them in a jumping pose? How do you draw them from a, a, a up, you know, an angle from where, where the camera is, is down looking up and, and vice versa? Lots of good stuff on there. So uh, check out svslearn.com and I will see you guys next week. Also, let me know if you want to see Tate in another video again, and I'll see if I can fit him into the schedule.